A common belief in our culture today is that science and the Christian faith are in conflict with each other. In fact, this view is held not only by people who are non-Christians, but also by people within the church itself. But is this really the case? Are science and Christianity in conflict with each other? I'm joined today by Dr. Mike Strauss, who is a particle physicist and a Christian to help answer that question. Uh, Mike, uh, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Uh, what would you say to somebody who says there's conflict between science and Christianity? Well, I think, first of all, I'd ask them, why do they believe that? You know, there are lots of different possibilities as, as to why someone might believe that there's conflict. Uh, one of those possibilities might be that you believe that science is based on objective facts and faith, Christianity, is based on subjective feelings. And then I would talk to that person about all the objective facts for Christianity. Because faith isn't believing something that doesn't have any evidence. That's an atheist view of faith, but it's not the Christian view of faith. The Christian view of faith is that um, faith is committing to something because it has enough evidence to believe it's true. And so that's a misconception that I would address. There are people who believe that um, science and Christianity are in conflict because the Bible talks about miracles and they have an opinion that miracles don't happen. So we would talk about what does it take for a transcendent God to do a miracle? And I like using the analogy of the famous book by Edwin Abbott, Flatland, where a, a culture that lives in two dimensions would see anything done in the third dimension as a miracle. So that for a transcendent God, miracles are really trivial. And then the question becomes, is there evidence for God? And if there is, then there's certainly miracles become a non-issue. Uh, some people think there's a conflict because they believe that the Bible would teach that certain scientific theories are incompatible with what Scripture teaches. For instance, the, the two big ones today are evolution mm -hmm. or the Big Bang. And then I would show them how those theories are not in conflict with a good understanding of Scripture, that there's still a question as to whether those things are true, but that those things in, them, in and of themselves are completely compatible in my opinion, with the view of Scripture, and particularly the origin of the universe with the Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. So I think it really depends on why they see there's a conflict. But the one thing I've learned is that um, ultimately there is no conflict. If you're willing to dig a little deeper, mm -hmm. to um, look at some of your presuppositions behind that, that ultimately there really isn't a conflict between the traditional Christian views as upheld in the Bible and what science has learned. Mm -hmm. So then how is it possible to uh, live your life in a, in a way with integrity, being both a scientist and a believer? Yeah, I think that's a good question for any believer. You know, if we're followers of the God of truth, then we should live a life of integrity. And what does that look like? Well, you know, in my science, it means practicing good science. You know, don't plagiarize, don't fudge the data. Um, to go where the data tells me I'm going to go. As a physicist, of course, I'm not going to learn something in particle physics that's going to conflict with the Bible. The Bible doesn't talk about mm -hmm. quarks and Higgs bosons and things like that that, that I study, right? Um, but I think it means treating people I work with with respect and integrity and treating my scientific inquiry with integrity so that when I find something or discover something or make a new measurement, um, it's done as a good scientist would do, and you're not trying to just promote something that you think is important. Now, finally, um, how do you personally integrate your life as a Christian with your work and career as a scientist? Yeah, so that's easy. Um, you know, I believe that when we look at the universe that God has created, we see a glimpse of who God is. A quote that I often use is I have a friend who's an artist, and he says, when you look at a piece of art, you see the soul of the artist. And God's piece of art is this universe, his creation. And so when you look at his creation, you see the soul of his creation. And so it's easy to integrate those. Um, everything I discover in the lab and the particle accelerators, um, just gives evidence for such a well-designed machine that has been built, the universe itself. And it's easy then to see a designer behind that. Um, 
So, you know, I don't purposely go in the lab and say I'm a Christian scientist, so I'm going to do things differently other than things like make sure I do them with integrity. But I do expect to see within the creation the soul of the creator. And so it's easy then to have a different perspective on the discoveries, that they really do show a, an order and a design that I might not appreciate as much if I wasn't a Christian.